I am joined by Darren Korb, audio director at Supergiant Games. Uh, thanks for taking, a, you know, a few minutes to talk with us today, Darren. Not a problem. Um, so obviously the big news at Supergiant is, of course, Transistor, your your next game. Um, so as the audio director there, I I'd hoped you could describe a little bit about the musical direction you took uh, with Transistor. Sure. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, this game is definitely a new challenge for me, uh, especially relative to, to Bastion. Um, there's this game has a very different tone. You know, we're we're taking a uh, a sci-fi approach this time around, uh, or you know, our at least our take on sci-fi. If Bastion was our take on fantasy, you know, and uh, and so yeah, I, I definitely wanted this game to still have an eclectic tone, but I'm approaching it more from uh, with with a different set of influences in mind um everything from sort of electronic music to like post rock and uh, a whole bunch of other stuff uh, in the middle there so obviously narrative is important i mean from playing bastion it was kind of remarkable how music and narrative work together so how are you using this kind of new these new genres to create the world of transistor and build that kind of backdrop on top of which we're going to be you know playing this game and experiencing this story yeah i mean i i think the one of my main goals uh when making a music for a game is just trying to reinforce the tone of the game as best i can um yeah so you know anything i can do in the music to to do that is is, is what i'm going to try it for so i mean uh in this case, you know, we, the main character was a singer, mm. so we, we have an opportunity to to uh, play with that a lot, um, and have the opportunity to have moments in the game where we have, you know, songs that this character sang previously and things like that, and all sorts of moments we can, uh, where we can uh, use the, that device, and and also, you know, I want the the music to reflect the sound of the the world, especially the instrumental stuff. I you know I want I want the sound of the music to actually reflect kind of what you're the feel of what you're looking at and everything like that as well. Yeah. Uh, well, it's it's good you mentioned the the main character Red. Mm -hmm. And uh while I was at PAX, I had a chance to play the game and I was kind of struck by the fact that you've got a character who is a singer who is mute except for the music that you hear, mm -hmm. which I you know, you've got these strong female vocals in a couple of the songs I heard. Um so what's I mean? There's there's clearly a message behind that in my mind. I mean, is this, you know, what's the point? What's the irony of of having a mute character who's singing to you? Yeah, I mean, definitely. As you play the game, we'll get into that a little bit more. But it's, yeah, you know, can't you know? Can't can't, can't reveal. Wanna, no, I get can't that. Give anything away at the moment. Okay. Um. So moving on from Transistor, Bastion, you know, was a really it it was clearly a different narrative experience, but. How is it different to work with kind of a Western, kind of folky vibe, as opposed to jazz and soul? Yeah, it it was some. I mean, I, I'm somewhat comfortable in that area, like you having taken, you know, grown up kind of playing guitar, blues, and stuff is like that yeah. thing most guitar players learn first. You know, when you're when you're getting into guitar, I think, and and so that's definitely been something that I. I'm familiar with and I've listened to a ton of a ton of music uh, that is related at, at least to that so yeah I mean it, it was sort of in my comfort zone to some degree uh, for Bastion definitely um, and so I guess Transistor is is other uh, you know other types of music that I'm I'm also interested in but maybe is like a little bit more a little bit more of a creative stretch for me which I, I find really you know stimulating and it's, it's been sure. pretty pretty fun to work on yeah um which was easier to use as kind of a way to build the storyline and to build Ooh. like kind of the, the backdrop you know it's um it's kind of apples apples and oranges sure basically. i mean it's, it's oh yeah we're trying to tell a pretty different kind of story this time and and so just the you know in both cases music is really important to the story we're telling and the and the the way we want to connect the player to the world of the game so uh, I, I think it's it's just it's important, you know, in both cases. And hopefully, you know, we want to push on that even more and try to make it even more integral if we can. But you know, we'll see how it turns out. Yeah. Um, 
so one thing that people have clearly, you know, latched onto and noticed with with Bastion was and and with Transistor is this idea of a narrator. Um, so in the case of Bastion, it was Rux, and in the case of Transistor, it's this transistor blade where did you come from in creating you know a, a narrator to a game where it's somebody observing a, a character who's playing as as you know live time so to speak you know we the originally in bastion we came up with that sort of as a solution to something we saw as like a, a problem in a lot of games which is where we didn't really want to have to stop the player to from playing the game in order to reveal the story to the player. Mm. So we didn't want to make you stop and look at a wall of text to get story or stop and watch a long cutscene or something to get story. We wanted to try and convey the story while the game play was happening. And so that's really what it, what the initial seed of that idea was, I think. And, and so it, it just kind of came from trying to solve for that something that we saw as an issue, you know? Yeah. And so how are Rux and the Transistor going to be different? I mean, obviously you can't reveal a lot about Transistor, but, mm -hmm. you know, what kind of different directions are you taking with them as, as different narrators? Yeah, well, you know, it's technically, you know, the, the Transistor isn't actually a narrator in the same sense as, as Rux because he is in the same, he's there with you experiencing things as you go along. So he's not, right. you know, omniscient or anything like that. Like kind of Rux is sort of telling a story, whereas... The, this is a character who's in the situation with you reacting to what's happening, you know, uh, along with you. So I think uh, the relationship to to this character is going to be different, I think, and probably more immediate than than your relationship with, with Rux was in Bastion. So moving on from the games and getting, you know, asking you a few kind of questions about your relationship with music and games, which, which came first? You alluded that you, you know, grew up playing guitar, but which mm -hmm. came first for you, music or games? Games definitely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, I, I, when I was a little kid, I, I think I got an a Nintendo when I was like five or something, and even before that, my older brothers, I think they had an Atari twenty six hundred. Nice. That I would totally play when I was a little kid, and um, yeah, I mean, I just grew up playing games, and I, I started singing kind of around the same time, I guess, as that, like when I was about five or something. Sure. And so I've definitely had an interest in both both worlds for a long time, but I didn't really get serious about music until I was about, you know, I started playing guitar when I was 11 or 12 and, and started writing songs pretty sh shortly thereafter and playing in bands uh, after that. And it wasn't until I was in high school, I think that I knew music was sort of along the path I wanted to, to follow. Um, but games have always been something I, I did for fun and never really thought that I could be working in games i just like didn't really understand <laughs> what what went into that or like how that could be a thing i could do but um and i ended up just sort of lucking into it when when amir rao asked me to to work for Supergiant. awesome um you know as a person who's played games and been involved in the music of it one thing that i kind of thought must be i don't know a, a, a hurdle for you or a challenge is balancing you know, wanting to tell a story with music and wanting people to appreciate your music with the fact that, you know, somebody's going to be playing a game and experiencing, you know, audio and visuals mm -hmm. and all sorts of different, you know, stimuli at the same time. So how do mm -hmm. you how do you approach the idea that your music could distract somebody or might not be appreciated? Well, you know, I don't really it's not for me. It's not really about the music being appreciated, you know, it, it's really all about improving the experience of playing the game. Like that's really like the point for me of the, of the music, it's sure. deepening the okay. immersion and all that stuff. So, so if it is distracting, then I'm not doing my job right, you know, um, basically. So, yeah. so, so my, my first and foremost, I'm going to try and make sure that, that it's definitely not distracting for a player and that it's, you know, hopefully, deepening the immersion and you know in, in helping to convey the emotion that we want the player to feel uh, at a certain time and, and things like that um, is there a musical genre that you feel might not work as uh, an accompaniment to video games i mean we've seen lots of different styles of games but is there anything that you th you can think of that wouldn't necessarily fit you know honestly no i mean i think that 
depending on what type of game you have, there could be a there could be a context that makes any type of music appropriate. Mm. I mean, probably. Yeah. <laughs> I you know I stretch I, for some of them, but you know, like I'm sure there is a game where like the setting and gameplay make sense for there to be polka playing the whole time or whatever. You know what I mean? I totally, <laughs> I'm sure that exists. I just don't, you know, haven't run across I don't, that I, game I, yet. I, yeah. I haven't come across it, but I, it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. So yeah. Hmm. Uh, now as a gamer, what is a game that you're playing now or have recently played that you've been mm -hmm. enjoying and why do, or did you like it? Sure. Well, um, let's see. I, I, I played XCOM three times all the way through. Ah, <laughs> so excellent. I, re I really like that one a lot. That was probably my favorite game of last year. Um, what was I, it that, what was it that like really grabbed you about that? Just the, the gameplay or, you know, the setting or what? Sort of all of the above. I mean, I just thought the, the gameplay was really, really addictive and super fun. Mm. And I, I'm a sucker for turn-based strategy stuff or I, just I can kind understand of that. <laughs> turn, turn-based turn games in general I, I really enjoy and and uh i just thought that the execution of the the game loop of that game was so fun and satisfying and addictive where you're managing your base the kind of slot machine type feeling you get from scanning for alien activity you know you're like oh i hope i don't you know encounter something before i finish my research of this new gun so i can sure. you know whatever like, like it was just a really incredible tension that it created, and I and I thought, you know, everything was well executed. The music, the it's really nice production values, kind of across the board. I, I really really enjoy that game. Well, awesome. Uh, thank you very much for taking the time to talk with us. Uh,